Well, as I say, it was a day like any other. Uh, I'd done a day's work. I was working in south of the river then in London and I'd walked to the main train station at London Bridge and I was at the platform side waiting for the usual commuter special to get on with everybody else, you know. And uh, apparently I had, a, well I know, I had a cardiac arrest and um, collapsed. Well, because I'm the first aider, it's our job to, to go and ascertain what the problem is. So we went over and I found Steve. actually sitting at this desk here when the call went across. I made my way down the platform, so as I'm coming down, it was more or less here. It's literally the door is here. The train was packed, uh, all the seats were full, and uh, the gentleman in question was sitting here. He was uh, just slumped and no movement from Steve at all. No breathing, no. He was going blue. Undone uh, the man's shirt, head back, checked his breathing, not breathing compressions, uh, paddles on the man's chest, shock advised, stand clear, shock, uh, continue CPR. This is real, isn't it? <laughs> and it was, it was real. You, you get into the zone. It's, you know, if you have stop, if you have time to stop and look at it, you'd be, oh my God, I've got to do this. But you just get into the zone, you get on with it. Announcement went over the tannoy for any doctors and nurses on the station to attend. That's the first one, the first response was on a paramedic on a motorbike. He just told me to carry on while he was sorting out his kit. So he just told us to, to, to carry on with what we were doing. And then to tell you the truth, it's all a bit of a, a bit of a blur what goes on next. So we have a huge data bank uh, of cardiac arrest information, which allows us to plan, especially when we're looking at putting defibrillators into public places, which is a big initiative we're involved with. Uh, we know where to put the defibs because we know where the big footfalls are, we know where cardiac arrests occur, uh, and so it's allowed us to plan. How do we unite the 999 caller with the AED? Basically, what we're currently developing in London is an auto dial system where when we get a 999 call in, all our defibrillator sites are going on to our EOC, Emergency Operations Centre database. What will happen is when we get a 999 call in with the postcode on it, that will send an automated message to a nearby location saying there is an event at this location, can you please dispatch your defibrillator? I do go past the uh, defibrillator on the wall at London Bridge Station now, and it does give me pause for thought every time I look at it and go past it. I wouldn't be here without that thing, so. Yes, let's, let's get them, let's get them everywhere. Every school, every major office, every pub, that would be great. So our biggest challenge was actually persuading people these machines are really safe. We're going to give you the training and the support that you need. So we started off small with a small amount of stations and we started to develop those. Classically was London Bridge and where thankfully we've got a gentleman there who's saved lots of lives now. No, I didn't think I would actually use one, but to get trained in one, why would you not want to learn something that could possibly save someone's life? And those are the people I admire, because they don't have to do it, they're not paid to do that. And I've, I've been told by Eddie and others who use these things that it's, it's idiot-proof, you, you do what it says, you just follow the instructions and it all works out fine. It shows other people, actually, anybody can use these machines. And now when we go to places and say, would you like machines? They grabbed them from us. It was life changing. Even got me into going to the gym on a regular basis, and I certainly never did before. Check for breathing, apply paddles, the machine will do the rest. If you don't try, the person can possibly die. So, you know, you've got nothing to lose. But I wouldn't have been here, I wouldn't be here today without, uh, without Eddie and what he did for me. So I know how fortunate I was. I chose a good place to collapse though. Thank you very much, you know, <laughs> you saved my life.